Foxworthy's Offensive Player of the Week. So certainly, no member of this esteemed panel, Dominique Foxworth, Tim Hasselbeck, or Chris Canty, are going to pick the Giants. Oh, to win tomorrow. Yes, they will. Chris Canty <laughs> likes the G-men. Chris, tell us why. I love the Giants being able to execute the same playing plan that the Green Bay Packers did a couple of weeks ago, which is come out in big people. I mean, 12 personnel, 13 personnel, 21 personnel, and run right at those pass rushes for the Dallas Cowboys along their defensive front. If you look at the New York Giants in the games after their previous two losses, they came out and ran the ball 47 times and 44 times respectively. They're going up against a defense in the Cowboys that is 30th in run-stop win rate. The the Giants' only path to success in this game is to run the football with Saquon Barkley, the league's second leading rusher. They've got to try, try to stay on schedule. If you listen to Brian Dable, that's what he's emphasized. They can't get in a game where they're forced to drop back 35, 40 times. And I think leading with Saquon Barkley not only helps your offense stay on track, but it also keeps that high-powered offense of the Dallas Cowboys on the sideline. I hear you, and, and I, I agree with you on the formula, but it's one thing not to want to throw the ball a lot. It's another thing not to be able to throw the ball a lot, and you just pointed out they've lost another receiver. I mean, the Giants are playing. It's one thing not to have a lot of weapons. At this point, I'm not sure there's any team in the NFL that has less on the outside right now than they do. Dominique, what do you, Mr. Canty likes the G-men tomorrow. What do you think? Yeah, I think we have drawn the wrong conclusions from the Cowboys' loss to the Green Bay Packers. Yes, the Packers ran the ball well against them, but they also had explosive plays. That's what's going to beat you in the modern NFL, giving up explosive plays. And you know what the Giants have a hard time doing? Because they are down deep on the receiver depth chart, it's creating explosive plays. Saquon is going to have to do it from the backfield or as a receiver. And they're going to be able to find that one player and focus on him and slow him down. And even though the Green Bay Packers played as good a game against the Cowboys offensively as you can expect, they still entered the fourth quarter down 14 points. So if the Cowboys are able to have a 14 point lead in the fourth quarter you know what the Giants are not going to be able to do outscore them in that period and win like it just seems like it's too tall a task the Giants are an NFL team with NFL players so anything could happen but it's absurd to me to think that they are going they're likely to pull this upset now, again, they're not just an NFL team. They're a 7-3 NFL team that no one, except I guess, <laughs> I guess Chris Canty, uh, believes in right now. So, so Tim Hasselbeck, help me here. Because we, we do a, a feature every now and again called Bad Week or Bad Sign. The Giants looked just awful mm -hmm. this past week at home against the Lions. Did you interpret that as just a bad week? Or was that a bad sign that the reality is the Giants are what most people yeah. have thought they really are all season long? I actually think that it was just a bad week, but that doesn't mean I'm going to, you know, align with Chris on this in terms of thinking that the Giants are going to beat the Dallas Cowboys, because I think focusing on, you know, the Giants running the football and, and Dallas maybe, you know, struggling to stop the run at times. Look, that's one thing. The other aspect of it, this is I think we need to put some respect, uh, you know, behind what Dallas has done offensively. Look, with Dak Prescott as a starting quarterback uh, in the, his last 21 games, like th they're averaging 31 points. Like I, I think we have to also look at what they are offensively because even if they're not amazing defensively and you're able to eat up some clock and you're able to keep that offense off the field and, look, may maybe you find a way to be more productive than you, know, that you were last week against the Lions – you still have to stop this Dallas attack, who, by the way, look, their backup running, running back, Greeny, you just mentioned it, is NFC Player of the Week. I think they are really good, and I think Dak Prescott's playing at a high level. And so I think you have to consider the balance that the Dallas Cowboys have. Yeah, Chris, and Tool, I found out this morning that you were picking the Giants to win this game, which I respect. I don't agree with it, but I like the pick. And my, my question, my planned question for you today was going to be, have the Cowboys now established themselves as the team to beat in the entire NFC? What would your answer to that have been? No. I don't think they're the team to beat. I don't think that they're number two in the NFC. That belongs to the Philadelphia Eagles and the San Francisco 49ers, respectively. I like what the Dallas Cowboys bring to the party, but I still have concerns about their run defense, Greeny. I really do. And I think this is an opportunity for them to prove me wrong going up against a team that really has no other path to victory other than being able to run the football. So I will say this. The Dallas Cowboys defense is one of the most explosive in the National Football League, but the Dallas 
Dallas Cowboys defense, this team is 1-3 when the Cowboys allow opposing offenses to rush for more than 30 attempts. So it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out on Thanksgiving Day. But I'm rolling with the G-men in this game. You have made Dominique do funny-looking things to his face. Go ahead, Nick. Final word. <laughs> I mean, it's just like the, the Cowboys, I, I would say they're number two behind the Eagles, but maybe uh, 1B. This running attack thing is something that we've been listening to for a couple weeks now. The Cowboys do have issues slowing down the run, but they're not built that way. If you listen to what Tim just said a moment ago, is they're the highest scoring team in football when Dak is out there. That's the point. They get a big lead or get a lead and then make you one-dimensional, and they have the best pass rush in football. That is how they are built. That's a good way to win modern football games, to score a lot of points and rush the passer really well. Yes, you're going to give up some rushing yards. You can't be great at everything. So if you're going to choose something that you need to work on, then I think in football these days, it's okay for it to be the running attack. I'm sure they want to address it. But right now, they're a really, really good team, and their only weakness is stopping the run. You'd love to have teams run the ball against you every play, especially when you're outscoring everybody and you average 31 points a game with your starting quarterback. They're in good shape. All right, everybody stay where you are. We will have much more time in this hour. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.